Hey guys, um, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. If you've ever been caught in a situation where you've dressed inappropriately, please hit that subscribe button. So here I am. Um, I thought that this laser was going to go tomorrow, but unfortunately it's going today, which means I'm in my gym attire. So um, please excuse me. Uh, well, I do a quick review on this laser. Okay. Uh, Fraxel, as you know, consists of a family of lasers, which include the Fraxel uh, Dual, so that's a 1927 Thulium uh, laser, the 1550 non-ablative laser, the Fraxel Repair, and also, believe it or not, the Clear and Brilliant. And the Clear and Brilliant is basically non-ablative, uh, and it comes in the 1927 uh, Pamir, which is actually diode-driven and not thulium-driven. So little differences there. But today we'll be talking about Repair, which is the CO2 laser. We've had this for about five years, um, and I'm just going to give you my thoughts. Um, I'll cut down to the chase. Um, it's a crap laser. Uh, in this day and age, uh, look, it's... Beyond, um, how should I say this? It's it's the standards of which this laser is is is, is a dinosaur now. So um, I think in Australia, New Zealand, they sold one unit last year, um, and and that's it. And I'll tell you why it's a dinosaur. It doesn't mean that it it can't deliver good results. I'm not saying that, right? I'm just saying that um, there are other better lasers in today's market, and all the dermatologists who would have a few CO2 lasers would also understand this. Um, there are, with the increase in technology, I mean, this laser is close to a decade old, yeah? Uh, it's just like, it's just like cars. It doesn't mean that the car is, is, uh, is bad. Uh, it still gets you from point A to point B. But are there more efficient ways of doing things um, in the last decade? The answer is absolutely. So if you're ever gonna have a fractal repair, um, have a really good think about the other options out there. And I'll give you a couple of reasons why. Firstly, uh, this laser uses a consumable, which means uh, a laser tip. Now, these consumables are not cheap, so they're up to about $250 per tip, okay? So that goes straight um, into your uh, expense, yeah? Because it's, it's uh, CO2 lasers do not need consumables, yeah? Um, so straight away, this is, I think it's the only CO2 laser that needs to be consumable. So they have different tip sizes. That's the first thing, right, which I don't like, is because it uses things which should not be charged to the patient, okay? Uh, and that consumable is, uh, is unnecessary, absolutely unnecessary. Fraxel as a company says that uh, revenue generated is used to actually uh, advertise um, for I guess the buyers of the device. Uh, I haven't seen a Fraxel repair ad in the last seven years, so that that should not be uh, that should not be the case. Um, okay, so do I use this laser? Well, I did, um, and I had to override it. Um, the reason being, as well, the second reason is that it actually overlaps. So we try our best when we do. Uh, fractional laser resurfacing using CO2 especially is not to what we call pulse stack. In other words, give bulk heating because bulk heating can result in bad things like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or um, post-inflammatory erythema. Okay, in other words, redness which may last months, you know, three to six months. So what we try to do with lasers or CO2 lasers is that we try to lay everything down in one go, right? So uh, that way you get uh, the, the heat, the energy, um, but the new lasers actually dissipate uh, the laser delivery in different areas. So it's called scanning, okay? So it's a smart scanner. Uh, this is a dumb scanner. This laser all in one spot, uh, and, then, <laughs> and then what you've got to do is go back and keep laying grids. Um, so that's called, I guess, stacking. Right, and uh, not every single laser beam will go into the, that exact hole, but what it does is that that stacking works out to what's known as a density. So then, once you get um, you get um, a laser density worked upon the amount of um, laser holes generated, uh, and that is due to uh, number one the settings of the laser, and number two the passes. Okay. 
Uh, the third thing which I don't like is the, is the fact that you've got a tip which is going to be in um, contact with the skin. Now, if you're treating skin rejuvenation, let's say in the neck area or the face, yes, I absolutely agree. Uh, that's what you want to do. You want to have the beam go vertically. But when you're treating things like acne scars, uh, sometimes you don't want the beam to go vertically. You want it to actually hit the sides of the wall. Uh, and because that's what I call um, uh, angle laser resurfacing, because you want to hit the sides of the wall and not the actual um, base. Certainly you hit the base, but it's the walls which count, especially when it comes to box scar scarring. And this laser, it doesn't let you do that because it's only if the tip gets in contact um, with your skin uh, that the laser energy can be delivered. Fourth um, is that the energy settings. In my opinion, it's, like I said, it's still, it's still a very good laser, especially for treating uh, the neck and the decolletage because of the, um, of the lower settings of this laser. In the higher density, you can go up to 70% in one pass. So I have to override the normal settings, go into what's known as R1, R2 mode, uh, and then actually deliver the power. Uh, so once again, uh, the settings are extremely limited. Uh, and in order for you to deliver the best outcomes, uh, seriously, you need multiple uh, different, I guess, modes and, and methods, uh, adjustability of the laser. Uh, everything from uh, density to the, the timing pulse duration, even for example, the U laser uh, mix, mix technology uh, has got that. Um, and deep FX, scar FX, um, active FX uh, from uh, Luminous has got that. Uh, and then there's some lasers which act intermediately, for example, like the Core um, by Cinderon Candela. It's a slower laser than the Fraxel. Uh, and if I were to do, let's say, a neck and chest treatment, would I use the Core? No, I'd probably use the Fraxel, but I just don't like passing the consumables down to the patient. So that's when I'll use uh, something like the, uh, the, the Luminous in a uh, low lower density but much lower setting because um, this is in the scheme of things underpowered okay guys so that's a summary of the fraxel repair uh, like i said it's it's not that it is a um a laser that doesn't work because at the end of the day it's the uh, specialist behind the laser that can make it work uh, but are there a lot of better lasers out there the answer is absolutely um so i if this was the only CO2 laser I had, uh, yes, I still can make it work, and yes, you'll still get brilliant results from it, but like I said, uh, you'll get better, safer results with other lasers, which you don't have to actually use consumables. So I hope that gives a balanced review, and uh, for all you Fraxel guys out there on the Fraxel board, uh, come on, guys, it's, it's just having a balanced review on things. You know I love the 1927, you know I love the 1550, but especially the 1927 in both the thulium and uh, diode-driven technology. But uh, one laser company, just like one car company, can't make the best of everything. So um, suck eggs and um, actually man up and, and, you know, just tell it like it is. You don't have to actually uh, flog a machine to death because it's now... Uh, an antique. Um, so guys, hope you like that video, I'm telling it like it is. Uh, a new laser device will be coming to replace this um, in the new year and uh, we'll wait and see what that is. So please subscribe, uh, more on Instagram, so if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do because uh, there's a lot more tips and hints I can give you. Catch you then, bye.